Alright, coming all the summon. That time of year again, the Pride Vikings, otherwise known as Gay Vikings. This is the final video in the series about what all the sources say. In part one, we went over the laws that were in the Viking Age, um, uh, Scandinavia and also Germanic Europe, regarding same-sex relations. In part two, I debunked all the common points in the mythology that the masses use to argue that there was a culture of gay vikings uh, but in this video uh, final part three i'm going over the actual solid written sources that give some evidence that homosexuality even existed in the viking age and what the general uh, society would have thought about it as always have to put this disclaimer before anyone gets butt hurt and starts crying homophobia man please I love the gays today, they're fine. As a matter of fact, the older I get, the more I enjoy hanging out with my gay friends, gay clubs, pride events, they're awesome, all that stuff. Uh, but for some reason, uh, straight guys these days, they disappear off the face of the earth when they get to around the age 30 and they get so lucky as to finally let a girlfriend come in and run their life. We try to get together with these straight guys, for a night out, or maybe a cool trip, or maybe meet up and speak some business, and they say, oh, I gotta check with my wife, she, oh, my wife says I can go, guys, we're looking forward, but I have to be home by 10, oh, man. These guys, these straight guys, who I used to be very good friends with, and then they have the audacity to get mad at me for hanging out with gay people. The only one acting gay here is you, old friend. When you finally got a girlfriend to whip you into submission and let your manhood fly out with it. I have a lady too. But you know what I also have is a set of balls and a grown man doesn't need to ask anyone permission to go out with the boys and need to be told when his bedtime is. I'm saying this guys, going over this, not to, I'm not speaking about partying here. It's about being a man united with a strong community of his fellow men. Previously in history, men would get together, we would have boys nights on a weekly basis or even more. Any time in history before 20, 30 years ago, we would have some drinks, we'd speak about life, we'd speak about solutions to our problems, our community, we'd speak business, politics, and if necessary, men would come together and fight for an honorable cause. This is how revolutions are started and this is how we kept the overlords at bay for thousands of years. Those days are gone now, guys. When we look around, it seems like the only men these days that have a good, strong community getting together regularly and uniting for a common good, they're the gays. Even though I don't agree with some of their methods and um, ideas, I think we should all aspire to have that kind of community that they have and, and social network. So for the Norse pagans, I know you're going to be pissed off watching this as well. Some of you guys who have the more conservative, traditional views, like I do as well, uh, we know who we are. I would just invite you to maybe try and be a little bit nicer to the gay community, because we men, men in the West specifically, have plenty of enemies already. We don't need to go around creating more unnecessary ones. That's my only views on that. That being said, that does not mean that I'm okay with people lying about my ancestors. Some people say that not only was gay relations accepted during the Viking Age, but they go as far as to say it was encouraged. My past two videos have proved that was not true, and this will be the final piece of evidence, so those people can shut up on their uh, Reddit groups, <laughs> and they can keep getting pissed off at me. So, going over for uh, some sources here. First, we have to understand the Old Norse word neith. There are tons of cognates and parallels to this in the Old Norse language that we find all over the sagas, Nithing, Erigi, Ragir, Strothin, Surthin, and others like that. They are all nouns or adjectives basically referring to an effeminate man who was cowardly and had some association with being the passive part in a male-on-male -male sexual act, or even male-on-beast sexual act. And this was the absolute worst thing that you could call someone in the Viking Age. This would have been the equivalent to today's six-letter F-word that we're not allowed to say anymore, times a hundred, okay? We have many law codes from the Viking Age, and, and afterwards, the deal with this word, it was illegal to call someone this. 
in many places and you can basically have the legal rights and obligation to kill someone if they called you any of these words. Uh, the video here goes into specifics on that. Uh, just this tells us pretty much all we need to know about the perception. Uh, the perception of being gay or especially being the passive part of a same-sex act. Um, this was damaging to your reputation and you can see what the general society probably thought about it. Uh, we see a couple funny examples that I'm going to go over here in the sagas, basically hurling homophobic slurs and insults at each other in the heat of a deadly fight. In Ljusvetninga saga, uh, Torkel and Gudmundr sling very creative and poetic insults at each other, as you can see here, as they fight to the death. Your ass has been penetrated by streams, but it maybe hasn't seen milk before. <laughs> Is it referring to the sperm, of course. Um, another, in Njal's saga, Flossi and Skarpedin are insulting each other at an all thing and even attack Flossi's father for being feminine because he had no beard. He was the beardless Karl. Um, the, part, the, the two part ways there, but they would uh, have a violent rivalry for the whole rest of the saga. So you couldn't just call people these things and insult their manhood. Um, so we don't have to analyze this uh, too much. Um, this doesn't necessarily reflect uh, hateful, evil, homophobic uh, people necessarily. This is just how guys who really, really don't like each other talk to each other. We all did it. I'm old enough to know, many of you guys are old enough to remember, even as a little 10 year old kid uh, growing up, we before we get into a fight with each other, we would be hurling these types of insults at each other and homophobic slurs, just like in the Viking Age, just like humans in every culture did throughout history. It's just simply humans, uh, something that humans did up until about 15 years ago when it was no longer um, appropriate. Um, we're just not allowed to talk like that anymore. But basically every single culture has these types of insults, these types of uh, homophobic uh, insults, uh, the worst insults to insult their enemies. It doesn't necessarily mean that they had all this hate for gay people and that's particular society. It's just the most offensive thing that you can call a straight man who fancies himself a badass. Uh, people think that a distaste for gays in culture uh, specifically stems from Christianity. And there is this idea that Christianity doesn't approve of gays, uh, and that automatically means the of gays, and that is a total load of shit um, with no evidence for it whatsoever. As a matter of fact, in the uh, uh, sagas, the Viking Age sources, all the accounts of any homosexual acts in any of the Viking sagas were done by Christians, okay? In Gudmundar saga, when Gudmund has sex with a man, um, this is the only clear attestation uh, of any uh, same-sex relation in any Old Norse source. That's the only source that goes into like detail of what happened. Um, uh, there's a couple other sources too, but it, they're, they're attesting this um, same event where Gudmund, in his quest of revenge, captures his enemy, his rival, um, and also his wife, and he plans for them both to be, you know, we can't say the word there, but it's the four-letter R word, um, so Gudmund directs one of his men to penetrate the uh, captured prisoner, um, and he was viewed as the kneading, the uh, passive uh, uh, one in this uh, gay sex act. Um, and this one example is what has made people today argue for same-sex relationships in the Viking Age and in the Norse religion. But guess what? The saga is called, the full name of the saga, people to always leave that out, so the full name of it is called Press Saga Gudmund the Bishop, uh, the priest saga of Gudmund the Bishop. It was a saga about bishops. 200 years after paganism was outlawed in Iceland, Gudmund was not a pagan, he was a bishop, none of his friends were pagan, none of his men were pagan, none of his family, no one in that whole story was pagan. Uh, all Christian, uh, so that's that. Uh, another one with a slight uh, uh, kind of um, 
suggestion of uh, homosexual acts. Um, uh, Kristni saga, uh, the name speaks for itself, Tuirvald and the bishop in this saga are accused of being in a homosexual relationship uh, with Tuirvald being the catcher and uh, uh, jokingly he is said to have birthed uh, nine children in their relationship and they were both looked at uh, negatively by the whole community in that saga so it wasn't just the catcher who was looked at as an effeminate uh, man in those times. Even during official Christian times, uh, this was the case. During pagan times, again, I reiterate, there is no evidence whatsoever uh, of any gay act that took place in pagan times. Um, they, mi they might have been. They, I'm, sure, I'm not saying it didn't exist. I'm just saying we have no evidence of it. So what happens is the scholars have dug into these sources and invented subtle little innuendos out of nowhere to argue for their agenda. One comes in Gisla Saga. Here, Gisli and Tuigim are playing a ball game, and the scholars take this one line that you see here and suggest a sexual connotation to it. Gisli caught the ball and hurled it between uh, Tuigim's shoulders, and scholars, so some of them, some very bad ones, suggest that this is alluding to oral sex because the word ball uh, was used in other sources in the Old Norse language to refer to penis sometimes. Uh, so instead of cherry-picking quotes to fit the mainstream academic agenda, I'll just leave this full text here so you guys can see for yourself, okay? Gisli and Turgim, I highly doubt that they would have brought the whole town there to watch a ball game in the middle of an icy field playing a violent game with blood gushing from both of them so, the, so that they can end the game by sucking each other off in front of the whole town, you know. Get a life. This is what university scholarship has come through. Some people uh, going over this source and their thesis. So, another one uh, that uh, the scholars dig into is in Fjöstbredra Saga. Again, it's about Christians in the early 11th century, but it's close enough to pagan times to reflect um, some societal values of pagan culture in Iceland at the time. Again, the scholars take a little line here and make something gay out of it. Apparently, as Tuirmundur, as they say, uh, tells the story of when he killed another man the night before. In the heat of the fight, they're getting to each other. Um, Tuirmundur apparently found some time to pull the other guy's pants down as he was underneath him in the river and have anal sex as some scholars translate this to and suggest happened but as usual take a look at the full text from the scene and you can see for yourself there is not uh, a translated version of this to English um, so it's only an old Norse and Icelandic uh, I'm not I, I'm pretty good but I'm not good enough to translate it 100% correct so I used a little bit of AI help here but anyone who else um, uh, is proficient in Icelandic or Old Norse, feel free to add your thoughts about what this uh, text uh, exactly says. I'm not sure what that ass gaping strangely over the water quote means. No idea about that. <laughs> it could be some sort of slang where the guy is maybe uh, shitting himself um, uh, before he's about to die. I don't know. Either way, I don't think a man that is almost fatally wounded himself as he was fighting another man would consider a trip down Hershey Highway while they were both bleeding out in the river. <laughs> so, a final one comes in the Gesta Danurum that uh, some of the scholars allude to as well. Um, the men named Oswith and uh, Osmund, they were great friends and they were uh, blood brothers. Both of them had wives, by the way. Um, no homosexual acts are attested in this um, uh, 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 account, uh, but by all um, accounts of it, they loved each other very much. Um, and, and some of the acts in there may seem a little bit sus in our modern eyes. Uh, for example, when Oswith died, he and Osmund agreed that uh, Osmund would lay with him in his burial mound for three days. Um, and as at that point, a Swedish king came upon him three days later, and Osmund uh, told him the story of how he, you know, uh, went to the realm of the dead and struggled fighting against the undead and all this stuff that you see here. And that event is also told about in uh, the story of uh, Egil One Hand and Osmund uh, Bajerka Slayer. 
so this is pretty much identical to other sagas uh, that we have accounts of where the hero goes into the burial mound of someone who is dead and he fights the draugr in there so the the undead like the zombie we can uh, equate it to it was the belief that after this happened and one came out victorious um, the living would come out of the burial mound with a newfound power or wisdom or something like that or a new sword or something you saw this in the Northman movie it also uh, no doubt reflects some sort of underworld journey that people really did some type of shamanic uh, underworld journey many cultures in the world believe that uh, the living um, uh, uh, if, if the living could like meditate or sleep around a recently deceased person then that deceased person's soul comes out of their body and the living persons uh, could send their soul with them and accompany that dead spirit into the underworld and afterlife to gain some wisdom. I cover all that in this video here. As for the rest of the story and their bromance, um, I think that's all it is. You know, today whenever two dudes are really close to each other, we joke and we call them gay. Uh, but this was not an uncommon thing in ancient cultures. They really had a lot of love for each other. You can read any of the old sources. Men's, e even going back as far as World War II, World War I, especially men, brothers that, that fought with each other huh? on the same side. They had such great love for each other, saying, oh, I love you with all my heart. I would do anything from you. Or like cutting yourselves and mixing blood together and becoming blood brothers. This, has, this romance has largely disappeared from our cultures uh, today. But ancient humans really up until about 70, 80 years ago very much had this love between brothers. Um, you didn't have to be gay, but you know, you guys can believe whatever you want about that. I, w I won't go too much more into it. Uh, before we finish, it's worth noting, uh, Saider. We have two accounts of men doing Saider in Laksdarda Saga and also Gisla Saga, uh, which uh, Saider, uh, most of you know already, but we can equate uh, that to something similar to shamanic type ritual type magic. And there was some... Uh, sort of sexual shame, especially if a man was engaged in this activity, and they were referred to as Neith as well. Um, they were probably uh, not up there on a Saeder platform in front of the whole village having gay sex with each other. Uh, the reason scholars have suggested this, there is some connection with Saeder to Neith, is that there, this shamanic art maybe had to do uh, with some feminine type of dance or convulsing uncontrollably like we see in many shamanic cultures um, and, and possibly uh, the act of getting possessed by a god or a spirit um, when when you engage in say that uh, so that spirit could communicate through the say that practitioner and this was viewed as being penetrated by a god or spirit uh, which is maybe okay for a woman but very shameful for a man if that happened that is the proposed theory at least and I covered that in this video here why there was some sort of sexual shame attributed to a man performing this but it was not necessarily him doing gay sex in front of the whole town uh final thing how about lesbians we should speak about a little a bit of lesbian stuff um so we have nothing alluding to women getting together sexually at any time during the viking age uh what we do have is a couple of scenarios in laws various um uh, law codes or in uh, viking sagas where a woman if she dressed like a man if she wore pants or other male clothes that uh, her husband had the right to divorce her and also the woman uh, could divorce her husband if he wore a low-cut shirt for example or other womanly clothes uh, for example in vatten's darla saga uh, the husband specifically wanted to divorce his wife, but he needed a reason to. You couldn't just divorce someone for no reason. You need a reason to. So the husband tricked his wife into wearing pants, um, and she, she, she got pissed off when she found out, and she tried to kill him for this because her reputation would be so slandered if that happened. Uh, we also have a law in the Grogos Law Codes, um, the, the, the Stadarhol's book um, uh, part of that uh, law code. This comes from shortly after the Christianization um, of Scandinavia and, and Iceland. Um, but the law prohibited a woman from wearing male clothes. It prohibited her from cutting her hair like a man. 
and it prohibited her from bearing arms or in general behaving like a man. So that's a little reality check for the Vikings TV show depicting an army of lesbians. Um, this was absolutely not accepted in the Viking Age and being considered a lesbian was probably even more damaging to a woman's reputation than it was a man um, if he was deemed to be gay in the society at the time. I'll give you one more, <laughs> one pretty funny one, in the Gyrgos uh, law code um, on page 174. I don't have the text, but I'll, I'll see if I can put it up here. Um, it, it deals with something called Meira Satsmetis, so great bodily injuries. Uh, if you inflicted great bodily injuries on someone, the punishment would be outlawry, so you could basically be killed. Now, great bodily injuries consisted of if you struck someone with an axe or a sword and their bone was showing, for example. Castration was considered great bodily injuries, but right there on the same uh, law, right on the same line, something uh, uh, told as striking a shame stroke across someone's buttocks, okay? So smacking a man in the ass was as bad as chopping his nuts off, and you can actually be killed for that. Guys, it doesn't take a rocket science or it doesn't take a PhD uh, to see what they would have thought about homosexuality back then. Of course, they were a little bit homophobic, um, but I don't think it was super hateful. Um, I'm sure gays existed, it could have happened, yeah, I'm sure there were gays, and I'm, I'm sure there were, um, but it would have been so shameful to to do that, that anyone who wanted to dabble in those things or, you know, uh, test out their sexuality, um, uh, it would have been done so incredibly discreetly that nobody would have even known about it, most likely. Um, final note, a lot of people may say that, oh, just because we don't have any written evidence of it happening doesn't mean it didn't happen. Guess what, guys? The Christian authors of the sagas took every possible chance they could to slander uh, their pagan ancestors uh, coming a couple hundred years before. If there was any gay acts known by uh, society, known in history, or if there were any gay people, we would have heard about it. They would have written about it in the sagas non-stop. Um, so it, 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 I agree with you sometimes that that is the case, but the idea that, oh, lack of evidence doesn't mean it didn't happen, that argument is not valid in this particular uh, situation, so we can't say that. So that's about it. Won't speak about this subject anymore. Hope you enjoyed. That's three parts to it. But um, yeah, happy Pride Month and uh, <laughs> enjoy yourselves. Be kind to each other. Uh, but that's all for today. Have you seen us next time?